The state parks in Wisconsin highlight unique geological features, historic significance, or cultural significance to the areas they reside. They also provide educational opportunities for people of all ages to learn about these unique features through self-guided tours or volunteer-provided events in the parks. Today, we are visiting Peninsula State Park in Door County. The major geological feature of the park are the cliffs of rock from the Niagara Escarpment. The location also has historic value with the Eagle Bluff Lighthouse and burial sites. Welcome to the Wisconsin State Parks. Known as the most popular state park in Door County, Peninsula pulls in the crowds. Not just for day trips either. Visitors come to stay with RVs and tents. But if you want to join them, be prepared to make your reservations far in advance as the park is full to capacity every year. The main attractions of Peninsula State Park are camping, hiking and biking, theater, and swimming. This park is nestled between Fish Creek and Ephraim on the shores of Green Bay. You'll easily be able to catch the south or north entrance from Highway 42. We will enter the park at the south entrance on Shore Road. Our first stop in the park will be Wayboard Point. This is a smaller camping area with a pier, picnic areas, reservable shelter, and facilities. This is also where Bethany and I were married, so it has some sentimental value to us. On the day of recording this, it appears someone else had the same idea and was having their wedding there as well. Good choice. Across Shore Road at Wayborg Point is a hidden area you won't officially find on a map. How hidden? So hidden that I had no idea of its existence until this past year. And I was born in Door County and love the state parks. This is the private Pioneer Cemetery. Here you'll find the final resting place of some of the first white settlers in the area. I'm sure this place is not marked to keep the cemetery restful. Please, if you seek it out, act respectfully. Continuing along Shore Road, the next intersection will take you to Blossomburg Cemetery. This is a local public cemetery within the park. The next road is Skyline. This, as the name suggests, will give you a higher view of the shore and bay. Turn here for a more internal drive through the park and for Sven's Bluff Lookout, from which you should be able to see Chambers Island and the smaller Adventure Island, Little Strawberry Island, Jack Island, and Pirate Island. Can I speak from experience? Nope. I have always ridden or driven Shore Road my entire life. I didn't even go up there for this video. Oops. Or should I say, oh. Along Shore Road are many turnouts for admiring the scenery. And since there are so many spots to review the shore and bay in this park, it's difficult to suggest any one of these in particular. They all will reveal the beauty of the local area in their own way. Approaching the Tennyson Bay part of the park brings the next camping area on the left. We also get the option to skip the Welkers Point part of the lake by taking Bluff Road. Now, we're not interested in skipping parts of the park, except apparently Skyline Road, so we'll continue on Shore Road. The next stop in the park will be the Eagle Bluff Lighthouse. You'll notice an uptick in visitors here. This is a major stop in the park. On this cliff, 76 feet above Green Bay, is a restored lighthouse that operated from 1868 to 1926. There are daily tours of the lighthouse for a small fee. A few years ago, I took this tour and was very impressed by it. 
I'd recommend it to those interested. Maybe for people after watching the movie, The Lighthouse. There is beautiful scenery to view from the cliff. There is also a lot of information around the lighthouse if you don't have the funds for the tour as well. And if you're lucky, maybe it will be baby snake season and you'll see tons of baby grass snakes like Bethany and I did on one of our visits. They were cute. Returning to Shore Road, we will pass Welker's Point, which has a reservable shelter, picnic areas and facilities. This spot is larger than Wayborg and tends to have more daily visitors there as well. Around the corner, we come to the South Nicolay Bay area. This area features more camping sites and the amphitheater, where the Northern Sky Theater puts on its outdoor shows. These shows usually go up from June through August. On the bay side of the road is Nicolay Beach. This has to be one of the busiest beaches in Door County during the summer. Not only do people stop here in the park to swim, but boats will anchor in the harbor to enjoy the area as well. We visited in early October, well outside peak swim time. But that apparently wasn't going to stop everyone from getting in the water. This is where park visitors can rent all sorts of watercraft, from kayaks and canoes to paddle boards and paddle boats. The general store can keep you stocked up on your day trip supplies, snacks, or gifts. The area near the beach also has changing rooms, bathrooms, and shelters. But the beach area is not pet friendly. Your furry friends will need to stay in the pines area. Outside of the beach, a leashed pet is welcome on all trails except the White Cedar Trail, apparently. They are also welcome in the camping areas, but cannot be left unattended. Jumping back onto Shore Road, we continue across the park, through the group camping area, past Highland Road, and uphill. This brings us to the top of Eagle Bluff with its 150-foot cliffs probably the highest point in the park. This is also where the park tower is located. The original tower was torn down due to being deemed unsafe, and the new tower was built with accessibility in mind. While the new tower is a bit shorter than the previous, it makes up for it in size. There is far more space on this tower for everyone to enjoy a view over the park or the bay. What is unique for this tower is the canopy walk, a fully accessible ramp up through the trees to the top. It will help all kinds of people enjoy the views from the top of the tower that couldn't previously. We visited the tower in its first season of operation, and there were a lot of people interested in checking it out. There probably was also some fall festival going on, driving tourists to the area, but I don't know, I don't do that kind of thing. It's a good view from the top, no matter how you get there, using the stairs or taking the ramp. This part of the park also features the Eagle Trail, a wonderful hike down the bluff, along the shore, and back up the bluff. It's probably the most difficult trail to hike in the park, but also one of the most rewarding. Let's hike a portion while we have the time. The last time we took this trail, it was a random day off of work, and we took our dogs. At that time, our pack included the stately old man, Griffin. He loved hiking and did wonderful on the trail. Our golden retriever, on the other hand, was far more interested in other people and making friends. From here, Shore Road takes you out the northern entrance of the park and across the golf course. It looks nice. I've never golfed it. In the middle of the course is the memorial pole. It marks the burial place of the last hereditary chief of the Potawatomi Nation, Chief Simon Onanguis Kukwados. The pole was originally carved in 1927, replaced in 1970, and restored in 1994. The bear carving at the top of the original pole is currently on display at the White Cedar Nature Center. 
observing the pole and the grave of Chief Kukwados is allowed during the non-play hours at the course. This park almost does it all. It has rocky and sandy shorelines, tons of camping possibilities, swimming, hiking, biking, historical options, tours, and even an outdoor theater to take in a show. Take advantage of an opportunity to see Peninsula State Park while you are getting out and traveling Wisconsin.